What's the worst way a girl handled your rejection? Story 1. A girl at work started playing some aggressive footsie at work. When I pushed her foot away and gave her a look, she went on to tell me I'm not as attractive as I think I am, that I should start dating girls in my own league. Story 2. I dated a girl for a week when I realized she just wasn't my type and it wasn't hers, so I told her we would go our ways. Her way, however, was to stalk me for three f***ing years because we were meant to be together for life. Highlights were making fake internet accounts of other girls I dated in those three years and frighteningly knowing much about me and these girls while writing to me, impersonating them, calling every day. When I changed numbers, she called every other person in my life she had the number, trying to date people I know in my life, making weird collages of me and her on Facebook, making up fake stories of her and me and many, many more. Thank God it became less and less after long, and exhausting talks I had with her to make her stop on and on again. Haven't heard from her since 2015. Story 3. Told everyone in the office I was gay. I have no problem with gay people, so I played along. Tell them she turned you gay. Story 4. A girl in high school out of the blue started describing what our house would look like once we got married and had kids. Told her that I really wasn't interested, and she lost her mind. For like two weeks, she'd wait by the doors after school just to glare at me. Never said anything, just glared. She was probably trying to put some hex on you. Story 5. In high school, this girl would not stop texting me, so I blocked her. She then went on to tell her friends she was depressed and couldn't get over me, even though I rarely spoke to her in person, only through her constant stream of messages. After that, she fainted almost once a day during class, but coincidentally only in the classes she shared with me, then would cry to her friends that I was the reason she was fainting. Of course, though, she never hurt herself during these faints and always managed to land comfortably on the ground, she also used to just storm out the door in the middle of class and literally fall out the door. Story 6. A dude asked me over to his house to study. He put on some videos on and made a move on me. I said no, and then he figured he'd ask if he could me. I rejected him and told my mom to come get me. He persisted the whole time. Then at school, every time he saw me, he very loudly called me gay to everyone around him. I am not into dudes and he was in the closet. Honestly, I just smiled and kept moving every time and he eventually gave up. I think he came out two years later in revolving relationships with each other. Story 7. Called me a greedy Jew. I'm not even a Jew. Story 8. Met some friends at a bar event. Friend had a girl who was beyond drunk with him. Friends mentioned going back to their place. I decide to buy a burrito and go home. Girl says I should come with him, but I respectfully decline. She demands I come with her. I decline again. Well, at least give me a good night kiss if you're not going to come with me. I pass because I do not know her. I'm not remotely into her and do not want to know her. This girl goes insane. She's shrieking obscenities at me, trying to slap me from the railing she's against, just losing her mind. My friends are trying to calm her down, and I just peaced out through the kitchen because I worked there. Anyways, just a side note, if you like our content and love listening to our stories, please press subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you'll get notified for our future uploads. Thanks, and now back to the video. Story 9. Dated a girl from work. After a few dates, I didn't see it going much further. Ended it. Girl pretty much spread around we did the deed at work. We didn't. That single-handedly cost me any kind of promotion or horizontal move off what I was doing. So I ended up changing jobs about 12 months later after every application for promotion was given to someone else, despite myself having a lot more experience and know-how with what we did. Prior to that, I was being moved around from project to project. After, I just went back to permanent nights. Said girl went on to get pregnant about six months later by someone else from work. Listen, don't dip your wick in company ink. My aunt once told me, don't find your honey where you make your money. And this story confirms it. Story 10. She got engaged to make me realize that she was my one true love, then threatened to take her own life if I didn't elope with her. Girl who I saw just as a friend and had never flirted with started dropping really obvious I'm in love with you things in texts. I can't wait to go on a date with you. I can't wait to kiss you, etc. I told her I wasn't interested in that way. She kept pushing until I told her I was dating someone. I wasn't. And she sent me a really angry text message and disappeared. She started dating someone and got engaged, so I thought I was home free. Until she messaged me the night before her wedding. Basically, she said she just started dating the other guy to make me realize how much I loved her and wanted me to save her from a marriage to this awful man. I told her no. Then she said that she just swallowed a bottle of pills and wouldn't go to the hospital unless it was on the way to Vegas to elope. I called a mutual friend and told him what had happened and proceeded to block the crazy girl on everything. Turns out she hadn't actually swallowed a bottle of pills, was just being crazy. Story 11. Had a girl smell me all over. What the f*** I know. Inappropriately touch me, try to dance with me many times after I declined several times, tell me how dirty she was, and finally, after cupping my b says, stop being a wimp, because I kept ignoring her. Weirdest person I've ever met. She later broke some stuff in the women's restroom and walked home several miles, alone, on foot at 4am without telling her friends. Story 12. I once went on an internet double date. 
My friend had been internet dating this woman for a while and needed a driver to go meet her for the first time. To help convince me to drive, they arranged for one of her friends to come with. When we got to the meetup spot, a few cities over, the friend wasn't there, stuck at work. So I was forced to play third wheel, watching my friend and his girlfriend profess their love and make out. Needless to say, when their friend finally showed up, I was overjoyed. She misinterpreted my, thank God, someone to talk to, reaction for a, oh my God, love at first sight, reaction. She got way too intense, way too quick, so I eventually let her down as easily as I could. For months afterwards, I get multiple emails and phone calls a day, with the craziest example being an email with our names, together forever, I love you, typed out once for every day since we'd met. She also apparently went to my work once, but luckily I wasn't there at the time. I was on the verge of calling the cops after that stunt. Eventually, my complete lack of responses to her communication, and after blocking several of her email addresses, tapered off. But I'd still get random phone calls and emails from her, even years after this all happened. Story 13. Rejected three different girls in a two-month span and all three said, What, are you gay? No. So I'm ugly? I didn't say that. Word for word, every incident. Lol. <laughs> One of them was kind of fugly, though. Story 14. Not me, but my best friend in school. She came on to him hard, in public. There were about a dozen people around. He was startled and turned her down. She then started screaming, stomping her feet and crying. She then told all her friends that she would take her own life. They tried to guilt trip my friend with that, but he managed to shrug it off. The whole thing blew off in three days. High school was weird. Story 15. She stalked me for 19 months, tried to hit me with a car, tried to hurt me, wrote my mom a letter and signed it in her blood wrote me a letter and did the same thing, and told all my friends I violated her. A few of them actually believed her, which just mystified me. On the positive side, I learned how to get a restraining order, a gun permit, and concealed carry permit. I even learned you can get them at the same office from people who work at desks right next to each other. Pro tip, when they ask you why you need a restraining order and a gun permit, don't say, because if one doesn't work, the other will. They have no sense of humor in that office. I would have found that funny. Story 16 girl asked me to prom and I told her I wasn't planning on going because I wasn't interested. Told her I had to work anyway. Asked for a few days to change my work schedule so I could go. I politely declined and she understood. This is the scariest one yet. Story 17. They broke down in tears. For the next three years, I was bullied by those two years older than me in high school. I was shy and didn't know how to handle an attractive 15-year-old. I was 13 at the time. Coming up to me and giggling with her friend. I thought I was being made fun of again. Story 18. Pulled a knife on me like a kitchen knife in the middle of the school. I feared for my life. She swung at me a few times and cut me, then she started hurting herself before the teachers apprehended her. She was screaming all the while as well. And people wonder why I don't like the Doki Doki Literature Club. Story 19. My ex-wife started acting real shady, sneaking out of the house to make phone calls, hiding incoming calls, and not telling who was calling in the middle of the night even though I asked nicely. She was also a mean drunk and had started drinking to access every night. Then she started to be physical. Throwing stuff in my head, including a large rock, kicking and punching when she got angry. This is where I drew the line. One night she went off the rails again in front of her small children, and I just knew that I could no longer live like that. I had just returned from a week-long business trip and hadn't unpacked my bags yet, so I grabbed those, took one last look at my nice home and my family, and left. As I walked out, I knew full well that all of the things I didn't grab were probably gone for good, but I needed to be as well, where I would either end up in jail or dead. She blew up my phone for the next couple of weeks, at least 60 text messages a day in the work cell, all hate-filled, incredibly vile. I tried to call her a couple of times and off work to talk about how we could best separate our finances and things to try to move on amicably, but she would just scream and accuse me of cheating because that was the only logical reason why I had left. Cheaters all do this, by the way. The last time we talked before the divorce, she threatened to file a false police report for harming her four-year-old son. She didn't specify whether the allegation would be physical or sexual in nature, that didn't matter to me. Neither happened. Neither one would end my career and my freedom. I cut off all contact. I tried to get her served with divorce papers only to learn from the process server she had abandoned the home. I went to survey the damage to find almost all of my clothes had been bleached, along with our new living room set. The new dining room table and chairs had been gouged. Weeks worth of trash and raw food had been left out. The refrigerator had been turned off, leaving hundreds of dollars of food to rot. The whole place smelled like death. She had also taken all of the electronics, probably to hawk, a passport with stamps in it from around the world, and the paintings I had inherited from my beloved grandfather who had passed away. She knew this would hurt me the most. All said and done, seven grand in property damage and another 1,500 in stolen property. I filed a police report for insurance reasons and also for a restraining order because my ex had obviously gone crazy and was capable of anything. The police, of course, didn't give two shits, not surprisingly, because I'm a man. Story 20. So originally my ex-girlfriend broke up with me. She was 25 at the time. I said, okay, cool. 
I'll move out at the end of finals about two weeks. She left for a few days to hang out with her friends. I decided to move all my stuff out while she was gone, except for some clothes, my bed, and my laptop. She comes back, notices everything of mine is gone, and starts flipping out. Thought she wanted me out. She probably wanted me to beg to stay together. Lol. She kicks the trash can, screams a bit, cries, starts pouting and stomping around the room, then lays on the floor, pounding her hands and feet into the ground like a child. It's exactly how it sounds. I, of course, start laughing because I don't know what the f*** is going on and this is ridiculous. Eventually, I find a place and move out. She would call me and talk a bit, then start yelling or getting upset. I would warn her that if she can't talk like an adult, I will hang up on her. She hated that, lol. Of course, she didn't stop, so click. She calls back and I'd answer like nothing happened and she starts yelling, don't hang up on me. Then I hung up on her again. Lol. This would go on for a bit before I got bored and stopped answering. Eventually, this happened again where she would call and I would end up hanging up on her. She called again and told me she was coming over. Now, I never told her where my new place was, but she knew the general area. I quickly park my car in the garage and go back to playing video games. She calls me and tells me she's outside and I should come out. Luckily, she was down the road at some other house. I tell her she's crazy and needs to seek professional help. So what does she do, you ask? She decides to push her car horn for a good 15 minutes at 10 p.m. in a residential neighborhood, all the while telling me in a frustrated childlike voice that I need to come outside. Of course, I'm not going to do that. I tell her to go home. At some point, she realizes this is going nowhere, goes home, then calls me and tells me she just took a ton of pills and to come over or she'll die. I tell her I'm going to call the cops and realizing that she would lose her job, works with kids, agrees to puke the pills out. Story 21. I've got one. In middle and elementary school, this weird girl took a liking to me, followed me around at recess, and wanted me to marry her when I grew up. If I wanted a recess to myself, I'd have to outrun her and lose her. Kept me in good shape. Fast forward to high school. I landed in the same film arts class as her. I'd often be out filming interviews and short films around the school, but when I was in the editing room, there she'd be, ogling me from across the room, inching her chair closer and closer, and complimenting me on virtually everything. My hair, clothes, jewelry, etc., I was a socially awkward teenager, and I didn't explicitly tell her no as soon as I should have. She reached out to me on Facebook a few times, asking if I'd consider dating her. That's when I said I have no doubt you'll find the one, but it is not for me. I'm pretty sure she started stalking me after that. It all started when I was biking to school one day and saw her leaning up against a telephone pole at the end of my street, staring at me as if she was expecting me. She lives quite far away from me. I used to live on her street in elementary school, so she must have followed me home then gone up at the crack of dawn and figured out when I'd be leaving for school. This happened a few times. Fast forward to the present day. She seems to have figured out what routes I take home from work. Sometimes I'll be biking to work or home from work, and she'll be standing at an intersection, again, staring at me as if she's expecting I'm going home this way. She messaged me again a few weeks ago, asking if I'd date her, and I gave her a very clear rejection. Hopefully this time it sticks. I'm just really, really glad she doesn't know where I live. Story 22 when I was in high school, a girl I had started hanging out with was texting and asked me out over text. I was trying to think of the best way to let her down and she was getting impatient. So basically I told her that I like being friends and I don't want to be anything more than that. And that I don't want to date while I'm in high school because between school, work, and my MMA classes, I didn't have a lot of time for dating. Plus, I lived out of town and didn't have a car. She sent me a text that just said no and wouldn't respond. After that, she stalked me for a while and tried to make me jealous, even going as far as getting herself pregnant. Another girl I had turned down didn't react quite as badly. I was doing headshots for her in her school photography studio to add to her modeling portfolio. And sometimes during photo shoots, things can become a little intimate when you have to physically pose them, essentially moving them like a mannequin to get the exact pose you want. And after a month of us talking and doing photo shoots, she asked me out, but I declined and she just walked away out of the studio not saying anything. Started dating a guy immediately after that and asked how it made me feel. But when I said I was happy for her, she flipped out. And after that, would purposely get super flirty with me anytime she saw me talking to a girl, trying to ruin any potential romance and getting really aggressive with any girl she thought I had a thing with. There have been a few since, but the stories aren't interesting enough to justify adding to a long post. But basically, one tried to tell people I took advantage of her. Another became a cam girl and has finally stopped cyberstalking me after four years. And the last one came after me with a knife. Your last paragraph makes me wonder if you know what the word interesting means. Story 23 that was a bit of a double-edged sword, but two girls in college, different times. The first one had a crush on me and her ex, and I helped her through everything. Was not opposed to having a relationship, but never pushed for it. She made it her goal to make me feel as jealous as possible around other guys. Maybe a year later, she finally asks me over to spend the night with her. I was a little baked, and after the weird experience, she passed out and started snoring. I felt weird as hell lying in bed stoned and awake, so I decided to leave. The next day, she texts me super angrily, as expected, and ignores me for a few weeks. Maybe a month later, she posts a picture of an ultrasound and tags me in it. 
messaged me back a few hours later saying it was a joke, and her mom called her crying. That's what she told me. Second girl had BPD, but was calm and interesting enough to pursue. She asked me to go to clubs and bars with her, and then made out with other guys while I'm there, even though she said we were kind of dating. Whenever she wanted away from a particular guy, she would come find me and start making out with me. I still gave her the benefit of the doubt for two months, until she straight up made me catch her with her ex. These are two girls who both wanted to date me and made elaborate schemes to exact some sort of revenge on me. I've stayed away from those types for years now. Story 24 Rejected a girl I barely knew who then started screaming she was going to take her own life if we weren't together. I felt bad for her, but pro tip for you ladies that think this is a winning strategy, it kind of makes people want to date you less. She proceeds to get on the ground and ride around saying she's having a panic attack and she could die from it. I almost laugh at how fake it all is. I mean, she gently sits down during her fall, then positions herself carefully and then stops moving. But a group of people came by and quote unquote rescued her. We were outside of campus. She goes to the hospital and obviously the doctors find there's nothing wrong with her. But she claims that they just couldn't spot it. Starts spreading the word about how she nearly died from the cruelty threw at her and how she was dying in the streets from a severe panic attack. I just cruelly laughed and walked away. Don't think a lot of people bought her story, but I never really saw her again, so it just kind of disappeared on its own. Story 25. I broke up with this girl and she didn't want to. She tried to talk me out of it and then tried to violate me by pinning me down. Being bigger and stronger, I just stood up and dumped her on the floor. One time later, her other ex, my best friend, was visiting and she came over. Things seemed to be going okay when all of a sudden, she leapt up in the air and tried to come down on my chest, their knees like some kind of wrestling move. I was so mad I literally threw her out of my front door and told her to get out of my life. Turns out she was jealous of our friendship. I don't think I ever saw her again. And for the record, it was good. But you know what they say. Story 26. Lying to me that she had become pregnant and intended to keep the kid. We had always practiced doing it safely, but condoms have a non-zero failure rate. And there's no good way to tell someone who says they're pregnant that they're wrong. So I took her at her word. After three weeks of her stalling and showing me any kind of proof beyond her word, she told me it wasn't going to be a problem but I was beside myself with stress until then. Meanwhile, I'm figuring out if I need to lawyer up since child support was going to throw a huge wrench into my financial plans. I was in the middle of moving to a new city as well. All in all, it sucked. Near as I can tell, her goal was to inflict stress and pain. She succeeded. Story 27. We dated a few times and I decided that, while she was nice, I wasn't interested in pursuing a long-term relationship with her. I thought it would be best to let her know face-to-face -face rather than over text. So we met up for a drink in the city. I made sure we got a booth for some privacy and told her that it'd been nice, but that I don't think taking things further was going to work. She began to cry uncontrollably and very loudly, demanding what she'd done wrong. Even from our booth, people started looking over at us. Maybe it was unfair of me to do in public, but honestly, we'd only gone out for dinner and drinks about four times by that stage, so I wasn't expecting her to react so strongly. Story 28. Me and this Irish girl hooked up. We had a few great nights sleeping together. Come the following week, we played off at work like nothing ever happened. But two weeks after that, we were doing the deed to each other after work. I realized after a month that our 20-year difference in age is going to lead us nowhere together. I break this to her, and she walks to the side parking lot and burns my pickup truck to the ground. Like, not even the aluminum rim survived this. She was arrested for arson. I laid no charges against her. I got a new truck thanks to insurance. Never mess around with a redhead. They are psycho. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out this next video. The YouTube algorithm really thinks you like it.